Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be talking about power over Ethernet. And of course, it's uh, abbreviated capital P, a small O, and a capital E. And it's the way you power devices today on networks. And Ethernet, of course, is a layer two network, which is uh, what a lot of people call local area network, a LAN. That's all uh, Ethernet, and it runs on Ethernet. And of course, you get your power from a switch um, that has that capabilities. But I remember it wasn't that long ago uh, that uh, I was, uh, we were putting in Wi Fi uh, units in the ceiling of uh, companies. And you put in a couple of those Wi Fi units all around the office, and it would be up in the, above the, the drop ceiling. The antennas would stick down, but it was kind of neat looking and it was really cool. And, you know, it wasn't intrusive and things like that. But when you put these units in, they needed power. And so you had to have an uh, electrician put in a 110 AC circuit there um, above the ceiling, which has a lot of code issues. And they have to do it according to code and everything else. And I tell you what, when you pull an electrician to do that, and then I'm doing my work and everything else, it gets really expensive for the customer. And a lot of times they would say, you know, I don't need that in the ceiling. We're just going to put it on top of the file cabinet and we'll have to live with it. But, you know, back then you had a uh, Wi-Fi unit and it didn't have the capability to be powered through uh, the local area network. And you had little devices like this, you know, this little uh, uh, brick, we call them, affectionately call them. But it needed 110, so that's where you'd have to have a 110 outlet above the ceiling right there where you're putting your Wi-Fi in. And it, it became quite pricey for uh, customers to do that. So what is uh, power over Ethernet? Well, uh, power over the Ethernet, first of all, is going to power uh, things like telephone. Um, it's going to do Wi-Fi uh, AP sites. It's going to power uh, also cameras. I don't know anyone that really has coax cameras anymore that, uh, that you know, non-Ethernet uh, cameras. Uh, so in this case, if, if you have a camera, professional commercial camera, you know, sitting outside your building and all that, most likely the way it's powered is is going to be through uh, power over Ethernet. And I remember my first interaction or our first company interaction with power over Ethernet. We uh, had a, a bunch of uh, Cisco phones and it was up in Oregon. You know, and I'm here in Southern California and I had some technicians up in Oregon. We're putting a big phone system in up there. A lot of phones, everything else. And uh, all of a sudden I get a call and they say, hey, our power over Ethernet switch, special switch, uh, it worked fine all the way up to 25 phones, but once we put in the 25th phone or the 26th phone, all the screens went blank. And gosh, we had to research it. And we found out that the switch had a limit on how much wattage it could pr produce uh, out the, uh, the ports of the switch. So that brings in another uh, instance. If you're going to use power over Ethernet, which I recommend, highly recommend that you do, then you're going to have to have a switch that actually produces power over Ethernet. And what happens is that switch provides electricity to the unit, um, you know, to the phone, to the camera, to the Wi-Fi unit, things like that. There's other things that are powered too, but basically it's used for phones and cameras and Wi-Fi. Uh, but those ports on the switch have to be able to power, uh, you know, the individual unit. So it produces electricity. Uh, DC electricity. It's not harmful, by the way. It's you're not going to get a shock from it. It's not going to cause a fire or anything like that. It's just not that high of voltage, not that high of amperes, and it's not that uh, big of a wattage that actually cause any problems. You're, you're, if you touch the bare wires, you're not going to feel them. It's not going to go through your skin. Your skin has too much resistance in it. It's just like holding a, a you know a couple uh, batteries in your hand. It's just you're safe. You're absolutely safe. So anyway, you got to buy the right switch, and we didn't have the right switch up there. Um, and so what happened was we hit the limit uh, that the switch could put out. And uh, in that case, then the switch just stopped putting out power to phones. But each phone, no matter what phone you have, you know, and I'm looking at the Cisco phone here, and that's going to pull a lot more power because of this big screen here. So you, you got different power requirements. And, um, you know, here's a... A smaller phone. This is going to a Cisco phone. This is going to take less power, 
um, than, uh, than the, the bigger Cisco phone. And each phone has a, a, a wattage requirement. So you're really going to have to have a switch um, because that's what the phone is attached to through the wire in the wall all the way back to the phone closet. Comes into the phone closet, patch panel, then the patch panel plugs into a switch. Uh, that switch is going to have to have the enough power to power everything you plug into it. And uh, the smart switches that, that are out there today and managed switches, you do want managed switches. So the smart managed switches that are out there today are able to distinguish the difference between these two phones in the power requirement. It's only going to send the power that's required for these two phones to work. And so it's not going, you know, not every phone is a high wattage phone. And so some phones are lower wattage. Wi-Fi's are, you know, might be higher uh, than a phone, but it only sends out the power that it needs. Now the switch also senses what type of phone it is. So if you've got a Cisco switch and a Cisco phone, they communicate with each other. Uh, as soon as you turn on that switch or you plug in that, uh, that patch cord that goes to that phone, that phone's going to communicate with that switch and it's going to say how much power that it needs. It's going to identify itself, what type of model it is, everything else. And so the switch is going to know that. Also, a really cool thing on some of the switches, um, the, the PoE switches, is that at certain time of the day, they, they, they cut back their power. So if you're not using the phone, uh, it actually cuts back the power on the phone, let's say, you know, after normal business hours. As soon as you pick up the phone, Phone signals at a switch, it needs power, switch turns the power back on. It's really a cool idea. Saves electricity if you have a lot of phones and a lot of switches. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm just going to buy a cheap switch that has PoE in it. I wouldn't. Um, you want a switch that not only has PoE capabilities, but it, you know, every port is powered. There's some of them that only half the ports are power. And there's others that uh, not only do they power, you know, don't power every port, they also don't have enough um, uh, power in them to power every phone that you have. So you gotta, you got to, uh, to do your math. You gotta make sure that whatever phone phones you're gonna use, your your VoIP phones, your voice over IP phones, what type of power they're gonna pull, you're gonna need to know that to order the right switch. And then of course, I think today with cybersecurity and everything else, you really need a managed switch so you can manage the switch, not only its power, but you can also manage the switch when it comes to uh, uh, cybersecurity. Some of the programs that, uh, that help the switch uh, protect you from, uh, you know, attacks, from uh, hacking and things like that. And yes, switches are internal, but they can also protect you from internal hacks. So uh, you got to program them correctly, everything else, and it's just... I mean, programming switches, they're just beautiful things uh, to program a switch and do it right and see it function and everything else. At any rate, this is uh, some ideas on uh, PoE. I uh, recommend them. Um, you know, we're going to talk probably in some other uh, videos uh, about, uh, 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 about VoIP phones, about cloud, how to get a VoIP phone into the cloud, things like that. And I think you'll really enjoy that type of stuff because I tell you what, the technology is moving so fast today and it's so, uh, it has such great benefits and it's getting easier uh, to manage and implement and use and everything else. And the prices are coming down also. That's pretty normal with technology. But anyway, today, PoE, power over Ethernet. That's as, this is what you need in your office. Hey, this is what you might need in your home if you're powering cameras outside your house. I don't know about cameras inside your house, but cameras outside your house, this is what you need. Um, you know, power them up over PoE. Uh, don't get the, uh, the, the coax ones that need separate power and all those stuff. That's another mess for another day. Uh, again, Jim Gibson, CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching. You have a great day.